Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Brant Larson and in this video we're going to be talking about inflammation. What it is, what it's not, and we're going to compare it to acute and chronic inflammation. Now I've been a practicing uh, chiropractor, natural health practitioner for quite a number of years and my question was always, what's causing it? What's at the root cause of all of these different conditions that are popping up and plaguing society more and more than ever before and what the root of it comes back to is inflammation. So we're going to dive into that in this video so you fully understand what's going on and what this term means. Now first we have to do, like I said, talk about acute versus chronic. Now acute, now well first of all we want to break it down into three different categories. So the onset, the signs and the causative agents. And we're going to do that with acute inflammation first. So the onset, it's rapid. It comes on quick. Well, I was an athlete, I sprained my ankles numerous times, and it, you know what happens, right? It happens just like that. You have pain and swelling, and it, it happens right away. So that gets into the signs. Redness, swelling, heat, pain. We've all had this, whether it was a long time ago as a kid, or recently. Maybe you threw out your low back, maybe you have chronic neck pain, maybe you have a shoulder problem. Or like I said, a knee or a sprained ankle maybe. Because you get pain and you know it's there. You get swelling. It swells up huge. You can't walk. That is acute inflammation. That's acute inflammation occurring in a certain uh, designated tissue. So what are the causes? Obviously injury. That's one of the big causes. It's obvious, right? Now what about foods? Foods can do it too. It can damage or cause acute inflammation in your GI tract more people are being sensitive to certain foods than ever before in history. It never used to be that way. And now it's really, really common. We have peanut allergies. We have allergies to wheat and different foods, right? For various reasons, we're not going to cover that today. But foods can cause an acute injury to, to that uh, gastrointestinal system. We have clothing and chemicals, right? Have you ever had a, a child who put on maybe a new shirt and got a rash or got red? because they didn't wash it first. That's why I always wash clothes first and never just wear them that way because they're loaded with chemicals. If you're still using regular detergent for your laundry or for your uh, dishwasher, you need to switch. Toxic chemicals are in there. So chemicals can cause acute inflammation as well. Now what about chronic inflammation? Now the onset is delayed, right? You may not know it's there. You could have food today and suffer the effects four or five days later from that. It seems crazy, but it happens all the time, especially with things like gluten and other foods like that. It's not right away. You get brain symptoms three, four, or five days later from that muffin you had on Monday. Insidious, we don't always see, make that connection or we don't know why it occurs. Signs, they're absent, but are they? We just don't see the signs. The signs are things like autoimmune conditions, brain fog, anxiety, depression, cold hands, cold feet, fatigue. Right? These are all signs of chronic inflammation. You take any named and blamed condition out there today and the roots of it will be chronic inflammation. It doesn't matter what it is. Heart disease, diabetes, Alzheimer's, dementia, Parkinson's, ADD, ADHD, uh, autism weight loss resistance, any hormone issue, the root of it is chronic inflammation. That's why this video is so incredibly important that you understand this process that we're going to dive deep into here in a second. Causes, persistent infection. So things like mold, uh, Lyme, Epstein-Barr virus, these are all chronic persistent infections that are inside of a lot of people's bodies and causing havoc and chronic inflammation. We have autoimmune conditions. We have metals, like heavy metals, like mercury and lead. You know, my parents, my grandparents, yours as well, maybe even you, grew up in the lead generation. And that lead is stored in the tissues, and it gets passed down in utero. I had high lead on a lead test. My mom had high lead on a, on a, on a lead test. My, both of my grandparents on my mom's side died of cancers when I was very young. Had we been able to test their lead? I'm betting that it would be even much higher. So metals are a cause of chronic inflammation in the body. And then we have things like glyphosate. We have Roundup. We have pesticides. 
We have BPA chemicals. All the chemicals that are in your, like I said, laundry detergent, on your uh, facial care products, especially women, the lipsticks and the different things like that you're putting on your face every single day. There are loads of chemicals in that. Now, where does it all start? This, it starts in the cell. And this is where the rubber really meets the road right here. Our, our bodies are made up of trillions of different cells. And these trillions of, of, of different cells organize into organs. So we have cells that make up the liver. We have cells that make up the brain. Cells that make up the heart. But it all starts with cells. And that is where the key and the magic really lies to solving a lot of life's problems and health disorders today. So, here's our cell. You can see right here, this is the cell membrane. And there's, there's two layers here. Now, it's two layers of fat. It's called a lipid bilayer. So, fat bilayer. Bi meaning two. So, two layers of fat. Now, that's going to be important coming up here as we keep uh, diving into this. Then we have the nucleus. Everyone knows this. This is like middle school, high school biology. You probably remember this. This is where your DNA is, where your genetic code is. It's that thing that you blame, your doctors blame, and say, oh, it's just your genetics. You're just doomed to have diabetes or thyroid disorders or heart disease or pancreatic cancer or whatever it might be because your parents did. And I'm going to show you how that's not true. And that's not really the case. Your genetics are just a blueprint. That's all they are. They don't control anything. Something tells them what to do. And we're going to talk about that coming up. So we have the mitochondria. The mitochondria, all these little blue guys out here, the mitochondria, big word, but all it is is energy factories. Every single cell in your body has to have energy. It's the only reason why I can stand up here and talk, because I have energy, right? But every cell has to make the energy, and these mitochondria are the energy factories. You have hundreds to thousands of them per cell. A well-trained athlete has more. A well-trained athlete has more efficient mitochondria. A sick person with a chronic disease has less, and two, they're less efficient. They don't work how they're supposed to. Now, the other thing that we have are receptors. Receptors on this cell membrane. And those receptors are hooked to something called a lipid raft. So there it is again, fat. It's a fat raft. So you can see how important this is. And what these receptors do is they bind hormones, vitamins, minerals. And you can see how important fat is right here. This membrane, fat. The membrane on the outside of your nucleus, fat. The membrane on the outside of your uh, mitochondria, fat. The raft that all these receptors reside on, that they sit on, fat. But what have you been told? Don't have saturated fat. Don't have cholesterol in your diet. It's bad. Instead, use vegetable oil. Instead, use margarine. But what is the primary components of this lipid raft and this membrane, saturated fat and cholesterol. It's so key. You've been told the wrong things. It, fats are so important. If you don't have the right fats in your body, each one of your cells can't work how they're supposed to. Now, again, here, hormones, minerals, vitamins, uh, proteins, glucose, so sugar is what helps your body create energy, right? Fats. They all have to bind to these receptors. And what happens when it does that? It binds to a, a receptor, it makes some changes on the cell membrane, and it gets taken up into the cell. It goes on to the DNA, tells the DNA what to do. It goes to those little mitochondria out here. It gives it energy. So the glucose comes in here and goes into that mitochondria. But all the magic happens right here at this membrane. Think brain. This is not the brain of the cell. It's, it's, it's here. It's this membrane. That's the real brain because it's allowing certain things to get in and certain things not to get in. Now, this is what happens with chronic inflammation. Remember we talked about acute inflammation, redness, swelling, and all those different things. Well, think of that similar concept with every cell. This membrane is being inflamed, so what can't happen? These receptors can't work very well. So you have testosterone, you have estrogen, you have thyroid hormones, you have nutrients out here that can't get in the cell because those receptors are blunted. They don't work how they're supposed to. So your blood work can look normal. Okay, so, you, so your blood vessels out here, right? Your blood work can look fine. And so many of my clients and patients, they, they, they tell me, 
My doctor has been telling me that my blood works fine, therefore I should be fine, but I don't feel well. And I understand you. I understand because I see it all the time. The blood works fine because all these hormones are out here, but they're not binding with the cell. They're not getting inside here, telling us what to do. They're not getting in here to those mitochondria and making the energy factories work. That's where all the magic happens. It doesn't matter about your blood work. Blood work is important. It's a, it's a good marker. It's a good standard. But if you're waiting for your blood work to be bad, you could be waiting 10, 20, 30 years before your blood work finally shows something. Oh, now your thyroid hormone's a little bit low or whatever it might be. Okay, it's really important to understand this process. It's why you don't feel well. You have chronic inflammation. Receptors are blunted and it creates a whole other cascade of events that we're going to talk about. So, again, hormones go down. Now, you have a membrane outside of your nucleus as well, so your DNA. What happens? DNA gets damaged. What happens when DNA gets damaged? Your genetics change. And now you pass that on from generation to generation. Look up the agouti mice experiments. What they showed, identical twin mice. They, they feed some BPA, so a, a poisonous plastic type product. And that one gets fat, it gets all these other problems. It passes it, that, those genes on to its offspring. Those certain bad genes are turned on. It's not that your DNA is bad. It's that those, the wrong switches have been turned on. What causes that? Inflammation on this membrane. Inflammation on this membrane. We'll dive even deeper into it. Membrane here too. This membrane is actually more sensitive than this membrane out here. So you get energy loss. All chronic conditions have energy loss in the cells. You may or may not be fatigued outwardly, like out in daily life and doing things yet. But most people are. When I see the new patient paperwork, when I consult with people over the phone and ask some questions, it's always, I'm fatigued. I can't get my work done. I have brain fog. Right? If you have brain fog, it means you're not getting energy in those brain cells. Okay? That's where it comes from, energy loss, because these mitochondria are being poisoned, they're being inflamed, they don't work how they're supposed to. Now, here's the five causes of chronic inflammation. I just, I just listed five, okay? So we're going to go through them. Bad fats. Remember, fats. We talked about that, the lipid raft, the cell membrane. We're going to talk about elevated glucose, emotions, physical injury, and toxins. So fats first. We have the fats. Remember, the, that lipid raft, the cell membrane. The membrane on the outside of the DNA, the membrane with the uh, mitochondria, it's all cholesterol, it's all saturated fat. You have to have the right ratios. So if you have butter sitting in your kitchen, it's hard, right? If you have vegetable oil, it's a liquid, right? Well, this, these membranes have to have a certain fluidity. They can't be too stiff and they can't be too fluid because these receptors don't work right. You have to have the right ratios. And in our mo modern times, we are way dominant in those vegetable oil type products. So what's happening? Way too fluid here. Receptors can't work just from that alone. So that's our fast. Now, with that comes elevated glucose as well. So what are you being told? If you're on a health, health program, you see it online, you see other places, eat small meals throughout the day. Eat six small meals throughout the day. It's like the bodybuilding way or the old bodybuilding way anyways. Eat small meals because then your body gets infused with these nutrients and people feel better. Why do they feel better? Because their blood sugar is out of control. Their cells are inflamed and they're not hearing these receptors, okay? So remember, glucose has to attach to these receptors to get in here to make the mitochondria work. That's really, really important. So if you're eating grains all the time, if you're eating sugars all the time, what's happening? You're spiking blood sugar. You're spiking insulin all the time. And then it starts to come back down. And when it comes down and reaches a certain point, you start to feel bad, right? You get irritable, you get angry, you get lack of energy, you get spacey, your eyes go blurry, whatever might happen. And it gets down. And then you have something, you have a little snack, right? You have a little snack. And it comes up and it goes down again. And then you have to have another snack. Because all your cells are doing is burning glucose for energy. But they're supposed to also burn fat. You should be able to switch over. You should be able to go hours and hours and hours and days with no food. The sign of a healthy person is how long can they go and not just get totally irritable and have brain issues and other problems? Because that, that means that they're hormone sensitive. 
But when you're constantly pounding your body with grains and sugar for your meals, and then also constantly eating throughout the day and doing this to your blood sugar, here's what happens. These receptors downregulate because the cell is being bombarded with grains and sugars and glucose. And it's like, that's, that's too much. I can't handle that. So what happens? It takes off a bunch of glucose receptors so that glucose can't bind there and get in the cell because your cells don't want all that glucose. You're feeding it way too much glucose, way too much sugar, grain, okay? So they downregulate. Well, now all the sugar is sitting out in the bloodstream. Now you get other issues. Now it starts attacking and nicking on the blood vessels and the blood vessel walls. And then you get cholesterol deposits there. And then they blame cholesterol as a problem. But it's actually the cracks in the blood vessels, right? I could get off on a million tangents here. There's a million ways that these things go wrong, okay? But elevated glucose causes these problems. It causes your cells to downregulate. Now what else happens then? Well, now you can't get energy in those mitochondria. You have to have energy in the cell. But now your glucose doesn't work how it's supposed to. So what do you get? If it's the brain cells, you get brain fog, you get memory loss, you get other brain type symptoms because the cells in your brain aren't working. If it's the cells in the muscles, you might have fatigue and different things like that. If it's the GI system tract cells, what do you get? You get cells in the GI tract that don't work. Your colon, your small intestine, your stomach, your liver, pancreas, gallbladder. These are all GI organs. You get those not working how they're supposed to, now the overall organ isn't working how it's supposed to. You get GI symptoms, you get the diarrheas, the constipations, and those cells just aren't working how they're supposed to anymore. So what about emotions? Now emotions are one of those things that you just really can't get away from. They're always there, right? And we're exposed to more emotional type stress than ever before. As I make this video right now in my office, there is a road out here, and I can see through the window just constant cars, and you can probably hear the cars. And it's such a big issue. Now, now my phone is going off and it's buzzing in the background. It's perfect timing, right? Emotional stress. One more thing my brain's got to deal with as I try to teach you these concepts. So we're, we're, in this modern world, we're constantly exposed to all these emotional things. Well, what does emotional stress do? It spikes cortisol. It spikes adrenaline. It gets your fight or flight system going. And we don't come down to the, to the range we should because it's one thing after another, whether it's relationships or emotional stress um, uh, for finances or whatever it might be. There's constantly um, deadlines, not thinking you're doing enough. Uh, a lot of women are doing so many things now around the house and at work all at one time, right? Guys are doing the same thing. We're like, we're doing everything. And it's just, it's too much. And it plays into that elevated glucose because your emotions, your stress response all plays into your glucose. Now that's spiking in different ranges because you're stressed all the time. Emotions are huge. And what does it lead to? Chronic inflammation. Okay. Now the other one here is physical trauma. So number four is physical trauma. And this can be acute inflammation, obviously. The redness, the swelling and things, right? But what if that doesn't go away? What if you have this chronic backache for months, years? You have this kind of chronic shoulder problem or a neck issue all the time that weighs on you year after year after year or month after month. And you get emotional problems because of that. Your, your stress response goes up. You don't feel as good as you should. You're creating chronic inflammation as well. Now the big one here is toxins. And I've spent a considerable amount of time uh, researching, studying, being a part of different groups uh, to be really a cellular detoxification specialist because this is one of the biggest problems that I see in society today. And it was one of my issues is chronic toxicity from infections, from metals, uh, from other compounds like that. And it, it's it really what kind of changed my life is to correct some of these issues in me. And toxins are just huge because here, here's your cell again. You have all, all these receptors. You, you have your cell membrane. Again, what happens? It gets inflamed. Toxins just nip away at that membrane and cause damage and destruction. It does it here like we talked about. It does it everywhere. It starts to affect the mitochondria. It starts to damage that mitochondria. Toxins are toxins. They're poisonous. Now think of this though. I live in Minnesota. I grew up in Minnesota. And when I grew up, my parents had a wood-burning stove. We heated the entire house with a, a uh, wood-burning stove, and they still do to this day. 
Now imagine if we stopped up the chimney and you know sealed it all up. What would happen? You get the smoke build up in the house, right? Because you have to burn energy, so burn wood for energy and heat. Same thing happens in the cell, right? You have to burn energy to or burn fuel for heat for energy. That's what every single cell in the body does. Now imagine the house. The smoke's coming in there. Can anything live in there after a while? Absolutely not. There's no oxygen anymore. It uses up all the oxygen. What else does it do? It damages the inside, damages the walls, damages your nice TVs, damages your cameras, damages everything. The smoke gets everywhere and damages everything. The same thing happens here. So this membrane, you need to take in nutrients, but then your body makes energy and you need to get rid of toxins. Every single cell in our body makes toxins. Just like our body overall makes toxins, right? We have waste products. I don't think I need to name them. One of those is your breath, one of those is sweat, and I think you know the other ones, right? We have to get rid of that stuff. When this, this membrane is chronically inflamed, the toxins can't get out anymore. That membrane becomes almost shut off, and these toxins build up, and you get this toxic waste dump in, in, in here. Lots of changes occur because of that. Your number one antioxidant goes down, that's glutathione in the cell. Your energy systems go down. Everything starts to change. Your DNA gets damaged. That's what chronic toxicity does, whether it's from the outside, like mercury in your silver amalgam fillings, or lead from your mom, or other, other places, BPA, or your toxic detergents that you're using. These toxins are coming in, but then once you get inflammation, your body makes toxins and it can't get out. So we have, we have cells that are becoming sicker and sicker and sicker all the time. Now, you must detox the cell to get well. That's really the whole point. You have to, de have to get down to the cell level to detoxify. Is it important to do a liver cleanse and a gallbladder flush and kidney cleanses and colons and keep, keep that working? Absolutely. But you have to get all the way to the cell in order to truly get well. You have to get the poison out of the brain and get it into the liver so it can kick out. Okay? It's so, so important. Now, think of it like a three-legged stool. This is a really good analogy because if you have this three-legged stool and we have all three legs, if I sit on it, it's fine, right? I can sit on, the, on a, on a three-legged stool. But if I take even one leg away, the stool topples right over and you can't sit on it. You, you, you can't use it, okay? So inflammation is a stool and we have these three different parts. We have stressors. Stressors, we just talked about those. They drive inflammation. Genetics in the microbiome drives inflammation. All of these things drive inflammation. Your gut issues drive an inflammatory response. Stressors, though, drive gut issues. The mercury is in the different things in your body drive gut issues. Stressors also drive genetic changes, right? It changes that. M m the microbiome affects inflammation, affects your genetics. We have vice versa. And then inflammation also creates genetic issues. You can see how this whole twisted web starts to occur and it looks like this. Right? That's why we have to look at all different factors. It takes a multi-factorial, multi, I guess it would be multi-factorial approach to really address chronic inflammation. You can't just go and say, oh, I'm going to change genetics or I'm just going to work on my gut and that's it. Meanwhile, you have this chronic stressor. Let's just say you have a whole bunch of silver mercury fillings in your mouth, or you have this big lead burden that you got from your mom uh, when you were born, and then you just fix that. See, it's not going to work that way. You have to address all three angles. So here's, here's the phone number for the office. If you have any questions, uh, again, I'm Dr. Brant Larson, and I really enjoy making this video for you because I think it's one of the most important foundational videos. Anything else you do it always factors back to this inflammation piece because that's the driving force behind all of these chronic conditions. And again, you know, people ask, well, what conditions do you treat? I don't treat any conditions. I don't treat conditions or anything like that, named and blamed diseases, because what we're looking at is giving the body what it needs and helping you remove what is there that's impeding you from health. See, I believe your body was, was, was designed for health. It was designed that way from the get-go, but there's something blocking it. And more and more people, there are things that are impeding their health, that are blocking their health. And the root of it is chronic inflammation.
but what is causing the chronic inflammation is what is so important. Again, I'm Dr. Brant Larson, and I'll see you again on another video.